All right, my name is Galen Green, and I'm, I'm the tour guide for this group from Manhattan High School, and other schools, I guess, in Manhattan, I'm not sure. Uh, we are 650 feet underground in the Kansas Underground Salt Museum, Stratica. Uh, the mine itself uh, opened in 1922, and it's been in operation, so gosh, almost 100 years now. And uh, it's about two and a half miles from north to south, and about a mile and a half east to west. We're going to see just a very small portion of the mine today. We're going to talk about how the equipment got down here and what kind of equipment they used and how they mine the salt and take it out. So it's a learning experience for those of you that have not been here before, but it's also just an experience to, to be someplace that you've probably never been before and may never have an opportunity to see again. When you bring this equipment underground, and we're going to talk about how we get it underground, but once you get it underground, it, it's not an easy task. And so we're not going to take it back up every time it gets a flat tire or needs to have the oil changed or the engine quits working. So they have to have their maintenance areas down here. And that's just kind of a mural back there, a picture that, that shows what the area is like. This was one of the vehicles they used that uh, they would take the miners around. And you notice the, the, the cage over the top of it, that, that's really not, it almost first thought I thought was, well, that's a roll bar, man, they must have been wild drivers down here. But that's really not, that's just, if they're, you know, to protect them if they ran into a, a low hanging ceiling or something like that. Now, how did they get it down here? Any ideas how they brought that equipment down? Yeah? Piece by piece. Piece by piece, exactly. If it was, everything had to come down. What they do is in that shaft, Underneath the hoist, there's a cable, and they would bring that down, they would take the cable, they would hook it onto the front of that vehicle, raise it up, and then that would, they would center that in the hoist and bring it down. Now, if that piece of equipment is too big to center in that hoist, then you're right, they would take it apart, piece by piece. Ways because they're entering towards the base of the mine. And once they had several of those done, they would come back and they would mine to the cross cuts. And that's what opened up the rooms and left the pillars in place. Now, over there on your right, that wall is called a rib wall. And you can look at it, and if you use your imagination, maybe it looks like somebody's ribs along there. Uh, each one of those ribs was created every time they blasted. And so, uh, as they went along there, if you started at one end of that wall and you walked down there and you counted how many ribs, that would tell you how many times they had to blast as they were walking along and, and creating that tunnel. It'd be interesting to know how, how big that crystal pot actually is, how much farther up it goes or how far back it is. Finally, you see this old fan blade left here. Uh, we do joke about what comes underground stays underground. <laughs> so now we're going to stop here. Thank <laughs> you.
Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. I brought a bunch of kids here. This is definitely not a murder weapon. Hi, I'm Ari. I really like the assault trip. 